Well, good morning. Welcome to St Philip's online service. My name's Richard. I'm the vicar. I'm Emma. I'm a youth worker. And today we're going to be celebrating harvest. And so to begin with, we're going to start with worship as we celebrate God's love and faithfulness and provision. Let's worship together. Thank you for your goodness, for all of 
the fruits and vegetables and the wonderful things that grow. Thank you for the harvest. Thank you for your goodness. For all of the fruits and vegetables and the wonderful things that grow. Thank you, Jesus. So, because it's harvest, we thought we would have a little harvest quiz to test your harvest knowledge. Be prepared for some fairly random questions, and you might want to make sure you've got a pen and paper with you just to bring in a little bit of family rivalry into this moment. So we're going to kick off with question one. Emma. When peas are harvested, how long do farmers have to get them from the fields to the freezer to maintain ultimate freshness? Is it A, 30 minutes, B, two and a half hours, C, six and a half hours, or D, 12 hours? Hmm, tricky one. Question two. The harvest moon is the full moon closest to the autumnal equinox, when night and day are equal in length. What is the name of the full moon that comes after it? Is it A, Hunter's Moon, B, Deer Mating Moon, C, Red Plum Moon, or D, The Frost Moon? Question number three. In a much celebrated April Fool's spoof in 1957, the BBC filmed spaghetti crops being harvested. In which country did they claim that the crop was grown? Was it A, Switzerland, B, Italy, C, Turkey, or D, Wales? Question number four. Crop over is the name of the harvest festival in which country? Is it A, South Africa, B, New Zealand, C, Barbados, or D, Zambia? Question number five. What is special about the harvest mass? Is it A, it's the world's smallest rodent, B, it has a prehensile tail, C, it can only be found in Yorkshire, or D, all of the above? Hmm. And here we have the final question. Question six. Many apple varieties are harvested in the UK at this time of year. But why did one apple in Devon make the news? Was it A, because it was half red and half green? B, it was the world's largest apple? C, it had no pips? Or D, it looked like it had the face of Jesus in the centre? Are we ready for the answers? We are ready for the answers. Here we go. Question number one. Peas to the freezer is two and a half hours will maintain the ultimate freshness. Fantastic. Answer to question two, the moon after the harvester moon is the hunter's moon. Number three, the BBC claimed the spaghetti crop was grown in Switzerland. Number four, crop over is the term used in Barbados for harvest festival. Number five, the harvest mouse is special because of its prehensile tail. And the Devonshire apple that made the news was famous because it had, it was, sorry, half red 
and half green. Now there's a few facts I did not know. There are many facts there that I did not know, but I'm sure they'll come in handy one day. We are going to continue with our reading. Today's reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, the parable of the rich fool. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid, out, laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourselves? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. One thing not many people know about me is that I have a slight obsession with socks. Um, I would probably go as far to say as I collect socks. Um, and so I have like long socks, I have shorter socks, I have trainer socks, I've got colourful socks, I've got plain socks, um, I have fancy socks, fancy socks are exciting, uh, I have fancy socks, I have fluffy socks for winter when it's getting colder, um, I've got everyday wear socks, I've got socks that I can only wear with certain jeans or trousers, um, and I've got socks that I accessorise to my outfits. My socks are my pride and joy, they're an accessory, they're like a necklace for my feet. Um, and so it kind of makes me laugh when people are like, socks are a bit of a naff present. Like when you get socks for Christmas, it's be like, oh great, thanks. Um, but for me, it's brilliant. In fact, one year my granny bought me a, a shoe box full of socks um, and it was the best present I've ever got. I could probably pull some socks out of my drawer and tell you that they were the ones that she got me. Um, and so I have a sister that lives up in Stoke-on-Trent and every time she comes home to visit she conveniently forgets to bring socks. Um, I'm starting to think it's a little bit on purpose but you know it's all right. Um, and so she came to me last time that she came home and she was like um, I've forgotten my socks again can I borrow some of yours because we have the same size feet. Um, and I was like fine here you go. And they weren't like my favourite socks, I wasn't going to do that, Pfft, no. Um, but they were they were nice socks still. Um, and so I got a text from her a few days later saying, like after she'd gone back home, saying, Emma, I'm really sorry, I've brought all your socks home with me. Um, here's some money, you can go out and buy some more, I've sent you some money into your bank. Um, and like, I was incredibly blessed to be able to go out and like buy some more socks. She blessed me with the money that I could go out and buy more socks even though I didn't need them, like, I have well over 70 pairs of socks across between what I have here in Tubridge Wells and back in Swindon. Um, I just didn't need them, but she blessed me with the money to be able to go and replace them. And so, much like me with the socks, uh, the rich man was blessed by God in being able to grow all the crops that he did and being able to have enough to get him through winter and more. However, uh, the rich man was greedy and he wasn't thankful to God. He didn't, he didn't praise God and say thank you for this. Um, he lived for himself. He decided that he wasn't going to go and give away uh, the stuff that he didn't have room for to people that didn't have enough to get through winter. Instead, he was going to build a bigger barn so that he could have it for years and years and years to come. Perhaps that's because he was scared that next year he wasn't going to have grown as much. But he was one man, like a barn is huge, he would have had more than enough. Um, and so God was not happy that he wasn't thankful and that he was being greedy. Uh, so he came to him the night and said, you could die this very night and all of your work will have gone to waste. Like he would not have realised 
like how important that was but God said you will die this very night and it will have gone to waste I don't know about you but if I had been if my life had been threatened like this like in that split second there and then without a shadow of a doubt I would have got up and gone and given away a load of crops to people that needed them even if it was like three o'clock in the morning I would have been terrified um and so I like to think that that is what he did now I think there's a reason this was called the parable of the rich fool this guy didn't have much common sense at all uh <laughs> firstly he he'd grown crops so that's like vegetables and fruit and wheat admittedly yes that lasts however fruit and veg doesn't really go past two weeks like apples go very soft and powdery uh what are some other fruits like oranges they get a bit gross and start to go moldy um and so by the time he'd gotten around to eating it all like unless his barn was the first ever freezer which incredible uh i doubt it was but unless that was the case by the time he'd got around to eating it all it would have all rotted away and secondly he tore down the barn he already had to build a bigger one like i don't understand why he went to all of that effort and spent all that money when he could have just built an extension onto the barn he already had that would be like me throwing out my chest of drawers uh because i've run out of space in one small drawer for all my socks I could actually instead just go out and buy like a basket that I could put in another drawer like with all my t-shirts uh, or like get an ottoman that I can put them all in it just it doesn't make sense you wouldn't do it like this guy did not have much common sense um, but on a more serious note Jesus has provided so many of us with such wonderful gifts um, and wonderful things like we have a roof over our head, we have food on the table, uh, we have money that we can spend on our friends and our family. Um, but unfortunately, there's some people that don't have that and they might actually be really struggling. So what can we do to help? Right now, it's actually really, really hard to share. There's a lot that we can't share. We can't share our toys with our friends. We can't really share like half a chocolate bar with someone because we'll be getting too close and we'll have contaminated it with our hands. Um, but actually there's a lot we can still do. We can give money to charities that are helping other people. We can, uh, we can smile at people in the street. We can say a few kind words to just make someone's day and give them a little bit of like something just to make them happy um, and Jesus told us to love everyone Jesus told us that we should love everyone as much just as we should love ourselves um, so I don't know why it seems so hard for us sometimes to share and it is it is a hard thing to share it takes a lot of bravery um, especially giving money to charities sometimes maybe we're not sure whether we'll have enough like if we give to charities we're not sure that we'll then have enough to buy food for the next week for our family or maybe you, you're scared to share your toy with someone uh, you're scared that it'll break uh, but actually it probably won't and it'll make the other person extremely happy now in normal times uh, you could share like a chocolate bar with your friend and that'll make them really happy even though sometimes you want that whole chocolate bar to yourself because it's going to be so delicious. Um, and so I didn't want to share my socks with my sister uh, because I knew that she might accidentally take them home, which she did in the end. But actually it meant that she didn't have really cold toes the whole time that she was home. She could wear shoes comfortably and it made her happy. Um, and it showed her that I loved her and I cared about her. And so maybe we don't always have to share money and food that that isn't something we have to do all of the time but we can still share a smile or we can share some kind words or we can we can if we have the money to spare give money to people that are going to help or give food to a food bank or the community larder here um there are still a lot of things that we can do 
So last week I asked some of the young people what harvest meant to them uh, and this is what they said. Harvest is a time to share and to say thank you to God and ask for forgiveness. Harvest is a chance to think of what you have and what others may not have and think how lucky you are. Harvest is a celebration. Harvest is an opportunity to see what God has given you in material items and how we can share them with others. I'm just gonna say that again. Harvest is a time to share and to say thank you to God and to ask for forgiveness. Harvest is a chance to think of what you have and what others may not have and think how lucky you are. Harvest is a celebration. Harvest is an opportunity to see what God has given you in material items and how we can share them with other people. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much uh, for what you have given us and for your word. And Father, I just pray that uh, you give us confidence to share things from now on, that as we go into tomorrow, we'll go into it with a willing heart. We, we won't worry that we're gonna run out of money, but actually, will just share a smile with someone and make their day. And I pray that as we go forward, that you, pro you continue to provide us with amazing things so that you help those that perhaps don't have enough. Amen. Well, thanks so much, Emma, for sharing with us about sharing. Ordinarily at Harvest, we would take an offering of food uh, that would be distributed amongst our local community and we'd also make a cash offering to support the work of Tear Fund. At the moment, we are pretty much inundated with food, thanks to Fair Share and local supermarkets and the work we're doing at the Larder. But I'd still love to encourage you, if you felt able, to make an offering to God in order to support the work of Tear Fund. Tear Fund work all over the world with some of the world's poorest communities. We're going to see a little film about the work that they do and if you would like to make an offering to support that work then the details of how to do that can be found on the Tear Fund website. But here's a little video about what they do. It starts with one. One disaster. One crisis. We work towards one goal an end to extreme poverty. We are one church, praying, acting, giving, responding quickly, living generously, restoring relationships. We are following Jesus where the need is greatest. We've been doing it for 50 years, and there's still more to do. No matter who we are, where we're from, we won't stop until poverty stops. Join, Join us. us. today we're going to be using some of the bread that we had from this week's community larder as vision aids. And so let us pray. Father God we come to you this morning to give thanks for your world, to pray for those in need and ask that your kingdom will come. And we start off with this farmhouse loaf which reminds us very much of the barns I've been thinking about in this week's reading. And it's a large loaf, the farmhouse loaf, and it reminds us of God's bounty and provision. So Father God, we pray for your creation, for a world that is groaning beneath the weight of exploitation and greed. We pray that governments, corporations, and we ourselves will do more to protect your world. We give thanks for the earth, its beauty and abundance, and ask for forgiveness for the times we have wasted its resources and not cared for the environment as we should. May we always remember to be thankful for all that we have been given 
and for those who produce our food. The next I have a wrap, which is thin and has been rolled out and stretched and has been under a lot of stress to make this. And so we pray for all who feel they're at breaking point because they have too much to do or because they're in pain. Help us to recognise our limits, to rest and seek your peace. And now I have a bagel, which has a hole in it and it reminds us of those holes in our lives when we feel something or someone is missing. So Lord, we pray for all who feel lonely or lost at this time, for those who slip through the holes in society. Help us to be aware of your love and to share that love with others. And this is so much smaller than the farmhouse loaf and it reminds me of the children. And so we pray for children everywhere. Help us to support the children and families in this area and as we think further afield of our support of Tear Fund this harvest. Lord, thank you for all the precious children in this world. We pray that you will help us to do all we can to protect them and give them the start in life they deserve. Lord, we bring to you all the work being done to release children from poverty. And we pray that you would bless every pair of hands that works for you. Increase and bless their efforts. And then finally, I have a piece of bread, which is quite dry and plain. And this reminds us of the places in the world which are dry, where crops do not grow easily, and where just having enough to eat, however plain, is a luxury. And as we think about the work of Tear Fund today, Lord, we pray your blessing upon their work and use this prayer supplied by them. Father God, we pray for people living in poverty. We know that poverty is detestable to you. Please spread your redemptive justice upon the earth. Help us all to do more to help those less fortunate than ourselves and challenge the systems that keep people locked in poverty. Help us to support them however we can, through our prayers and our giving. The earth is fruitful. May we be generous. The earth is fragile. May we be gentle. The earth is fractured. May we be just. Creating God, harvest in us joy and generosity as we together share in thanks and giving. Amen.
great to have you join us uh, for our harvest service today. Um, Rich, why don't you close for prayer? Thanks very much. Let's pray together. Father, we want to thank you for your goodness, for your love, for your faithfulness, that every good gift comes from you. And we want to pray, Lord, that you would help us to be generous with all that you give us. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you, be with those that you love and remain with you always.